um, face is very much better. Okay, so this is Broderick up here, and then I don't know who this is. Tell me your name. Anna. Hannah. Anna. Anna with an A. Yeah. And then you are. Your mouth. You didn't have your microphone on. Sorry, I swear I hit the button. My name is Matthew. Matthew and Hayden. Hayden and Caitlin. Caitlin. Marin. Marin. Emily. No. Sarah. You're Sarah. Um, I'm Alex. Alex, this is kind of cool. I kind of like it. This must be what the Utah Jazz do with those games. What is it? What is? Tell me your name. Alejandra. Alejandra. Whitney. Whitney. Mia. Mia. Yeah, you just went on camera. Good for you. Tell me your name. Jed. Jed. Keaton. Keaton or Keaton? Yep. Keaton. With, a, with an H? Uh, no, with a K. K. Keaton. Okay. And yep. Victor. And then tell me your name. I'm Zach. Zach. Jonathan. Jonathan, and everybody knows Rick. And Jennifer, I got you. And Emily. Emily, and tell me your name on the bottom row. Yeah, you. Except for we can't hear you. Uh, I'm Paul. Paul. All right. Well, thank you. Was that Hayden that told me how to do that? Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you. I did not know about that. Yeah, there was a rough game last night. I was at the game, which was sucked. So they better win game seven or I'm going to be really mad. By the way, do you guys know when the NBA season's going to start? Even though this one's not even over yet. They're talking about December. <laughs> so, I, did I tell you guys I work for the Utah Jazz? Yeah, so I were, I run that little scoreboard on the bottom of the screen. Oh, you can even see my hand in there. I can poke uh, Jennifer here. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we once we only can get, do the first round, and after that, it's on ABC. And in fact, they already told us we're not going to be on Tuesday night, so it's an ABC game. So, all right. Well, thank you. That's very cool. Um, all right, so are you guys ready to talk about uh, Chapter 2? We're going to get into some fun stuff. All right, so let me pull up Chapter 2. And we're going to talk about frequencies and relative frequencies, okay? Okay. Um, all right. And in fact, you can see my notes are very short because normally I do this in Excel and I'm probably going to do it in Excel anyway. Um, you do not need to know how to do it in Excel. Uh, I just think it's easier way to present the information. So if, um, <clears throat> if you want to demonstrate how um, an explanatory variable changes it with a response variable, you need to do an experiment. So I think I do have, let me see here, uh, if I go to assignments, um, I think I have some spreadsheets, which uh, normally, so if we were in a live class, I'd be like, go ahead and open this up, but we really don't need to, um, because, well, so I will tell you this, if we were teaching this class in a live class, I'd probably give you a computer test but since I can't really do that, a computer test in Excel, since I can't really do that uh, in this class, um, then uh, you guys are just going to have to do all this with pencil and paper. But let's say that a physical therapist wants to know the types of therapy required by a patient. So the easiest thing to do is the, the um, physical therapist does you know just keeps track so they had 12 back injuries and they had two wrist injuries and one elbow injury and two hips and three shoulders and etc so this is what is called a frequency 
distribution. You just keep track of everything, okay? So that's as simple as that, okay? So on the homework, if you, you know, normally they'll put like back, back, wrist, elbow, etc., back, etc. All you're going to do is you're going to count the number of back injuries, and in this case we got 12, two wrists, one elbow, two hips, etc. Okay? And so, um, so that's what is called a frequency distribution. Now, a relative frequency distribution, you can think of that as a percent. Okay? So in order to figure out the percent, first I'm going to have to get a total, right? And so <clears throat> I'm going to grab the total here. We've got 28 patients this day. And then in this case, I'm going to take the 12 and I'm going to divide it by the 28. And then I will copy this down. <clears throat> now, so, and I know I'm doing this in Excel. I just think it's easier and faster to figure those out. But do you guys feel like you could probably um, pretty easily figure out the uh, uh, the percentages? Anybody not understand that? Okay. All right, so this is a frequency distribution. This is a relative frequency distribution. Okay, so no. I'm sorry, what did you divide the first number by? By the total, 28. Okay. So 12 divided by 28 works out to be about 43%. Okay. When you guys are doing this, if you want to just leave them as decimals instead of writing them as a percent, that's fine. Um, if I add this up, theoretically, it should add up to 100% or 1, and it does. You can also double check that to make sure you've got that. Okay. So can you explain exactly what a frequency distribution is? Like, is it just like basically the categories? Like, I'm just trying to put it in words. It's just the count. Yeah. So basically you're just, you just, you know, you could keep track with your fingers or, or a tick mark on a piece of paper. So uh, <clears throat> The first patient comes in with a back injury. The second patient comes in with a back injury. The third patient comes in with a wrist injury. I, I've hidden the raw data from you. The fourth person is an elbow. The fifth person is a back. You're just going to count up all of these. You're going to keep track of them. And I already summarized the data for you. I've got 12 back injuries. OK. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I give you some raw data like this, theoretically, you should be able to count and put them in a table just like that. Okay. Okay. All right. So now let's talk oh, about a cumulative it. distribution. The frequency distribution. Okay. Now definition of that can be the sum of all above each category. Okay. So this first one, there's nothing above the back injury. So I've got 12 back injuries. Okay. The second one is going to be the two wrist injuries plus the 12 back injuries. So that's going to be a total of 14. Okay. So the idea with the cumulative frequency distribution is I'm going to add up all of these and I should get 28, which is my total here. So I've got 28 neck, groin, hand, knee, shoulder, hip, elbow, wrist, and back injuries. Okay. So does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then we've got the relative cumulative distribution. Okay. And so... Um, Whenever you hear relative, you can think of percent, okay? So rather than doing the counts here, we're going to do the percents. So the first one's going to be, there's nothing above the back injury, so that's going to be 43% again. And then we're going to take the 7% plus the 43%, which works out to be 
And if I add that up, it should add up to 100%. Okay. So, in summary, I've got frequency distribution, relative frequency distribution, cumulative frequency distribution, and relative cumulative distribution. Okay. So, these are the four different types of distributions we have. And um, do you all feel comfortable um, doing this? on a test or a quiz. Okay. All right. It's going to be hard to make this a multiple choice, but I'll do my best. Can I just ask a question? What would be the purpose of doing the cumulative distributions for either one? Um, <laughs> in this class, basically, I'm just trying to show you how to do do this. Um, but the idea here is, well, here, I'll tell you this. We can also create a graph, okay? We also have something called a Pareto diagram. Now, Pareto diagram, so I could create a bar chart looks like this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use Excel. If I insert a bar chart, then we've got this here. Of course, I should label this well. Now, you guys are all going to be doing this with pencil and paper. Um, I'm going to add some axis titles and I'm going to put body part injured down here and I'm going to put number of patients and um, so this first part generally as we're doing this as we're creating frequency distributions we're going to be using them to create a graph and we're going to try to see if our graph is bell shaped now you probably wouldn't expect a graph to necessarily be bell shaped when it's talking about types of injuries i mean it kind of looks like a bell here with knee and shoulder but you've also got a big thing here with back problems now a pareto chart okay is Basically, you can think of that as a bar chart in descending order. Okay. And so one of the things that I could do is I could sort this thing, which I can do look at this very quickly uh, with Excel. And I can short do the frequency distribution from largest to smallest. Okay. Which was really nice. So now you can see that this is a, a bar chart in descending order. That's what a Pareto chart is. The idea with this is you can see, so let's say that I was the safety director for this company and I wanted to reduce injuries. Where would I start my training? I would start with how to prevent back injuries because clearly that is the highest. So, you know, we'll talk about l proper lifting techniques, that sort of a thing. Then maybe I can focus on knees and then shoulders and then wrists and hips and hand and et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, so that's, so to, to fully answer your question, uh, we're looking at, so this is a frequency distribution and we're trying to figure out in this case, how to reduce our back injuries. Now, later on in this chapter, we're going to, um, also, talk about or use this to start creating um, we're trying to see if our data look like uh, a, a, a bell curve so I think I have a question here let me just look or comment I'm not sure cumulative and relative frequency isn't in the book until 2.3 oh really oh well I guess I'm going to teach you 2.3 then. That's interesting. I thought that was in the center. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Alexander. I didn't realize I was teaching you that early. So that'll make 2.3 go really fast. <laughs> okay. Now, another type. See, this is where I really wish that we could do... Um, use Excel, which is going to be tough this semester because I'm just going to make you guys do this all paper and pencil. Um, 
normally we'd be in class and you'd say, and I'd say, okay, now I want you to create a pie graph, which is really easy to do in Excel. They've got this little pie graph thing here and you can create a pie graph just like that. It's a lot harder to do in um, pencil and paper because now you're gonna have to figure out these percentages and um, figure out, you know, so 42 degrees, I mean, if you're gonna really draw this well, you're gonna need to figure out how many degrees that 42% is of your um, uh, how many degrees that works out to be. And anyway, it's, Excel can do it lickety squit, whatever that word is, very quickly. <laughs> and um, so, uh, so you've got that. No, actually, the other thing I f forgot to put here, we want to put good titles. So these, we can say, talk about um, visits to a PT clinic. And um, this is also visits to PT clinic. Okay. Um, now, just for fun, we'll do a quick uh, poll question. Which one do you like better? Do you like the pie graph or do you like the, the well, I'll call this a Pareto chart, Pareto chart better? And this is just personal preference, basically. So give me a thumbs up. So Victor, you haven't downloaded the software yet? You don't like the software? Can you hear me? I can. I downloaded it, but it just, the app gives me like an error when I load in. So I have to go through the email or the link you gave us. Oh really? That's weird. Yeah. Okay. All right, we've got 12 and 4, 16, 17 people. Somebody took their Pareto chart on and off. All right. Um, okay. So um, the the so you know what? Often bar graphs and pie graphs are used for categorical data. Okay which means not numerical data. Um, so uh, pie graphs should only be used if parts of a whole, okay? All right, so I've got a couple of comments here. I would prefer you guys rather than doing the comments. Oh. These aren't in my chat. Are there other comments here that people are making? Oh, these are just reactions. Okay. I finally figured out how to see. Anyway, okay. So, um, all right, we'll go back to here. So, um, so let me give you a, for instance here, let's say that I had tax rate. Sorry, can you hear me and say what pie graph should only be used for one more time? Parts of a whole. Okay, so if these are all the injuries used uh, that we got. It's, I and mean, it says this is by a day, one day. So these are all the injuries in one day at a PT clinic. That did it. Okay. Now let me ask you this. So I'm going to ask you. Sorry. Uh, what what would be the best type of, of chart? So I've got, um, let's got Utah, Colorado, um, Nevada, Arizona, Idaho. Okay. And let's say I had tax rate, Utah is 6.5% sales tax, and Colorado is 6%, and Nevada is 3%, and Arizona is 4.5% and Idaho is 6.75%, okay? So, 
what kind of a chart? Here, maybe we'll do a poll question again. What kind of a chart would you want to do? Um, and I'll just put pie or bar. So what do you guys think on this one? Okay, we've got 10 votes in. Okay. So most of you are going with bar, with bar. And let's pick on somebody who went with a bar. Why, Jed? Let's pick on you, Jed. Why, Jed, did you go with a bar graph? Um, honestly, I just like how they look better. It seems like, to me, it just conceptualizes easier. Okay. So personal preference. Yeah. How about um, Alejandra? What did, why did you go with a bar? Um, because I feel like taxes would be able to be better represented in the bar graph than in a pie graph. Okay. So kind of personal preference again. How about Jonathan? Yeah, I... I'd say I'm pretty much along the same lines. I think this particular set of data probably just, in my opinion, works a little bit better with a bar graph. Okay. Well, let me ask you guys all something. Um, so the first thing I do is I say, do, does this add up to 100%? No. Okay. Even if I had all 50 states in there, would it add? So would your sales tax rate up add up to 100%? No. No. Okay, so um, this is a case where a, a bar graph would be a better choice than a pie graph because the pie graph, in fact, let me draw a pie graph here for a minute. If I were to draw a pie graph, it would look like at, that adds up to 100%, right? And that would be inappropriate in this case. So this would be a case where a bar graph, this is one of the few cases where a bar graph would actually be better, okay? Um, make sure on your test that you're labeling these. So these are uh, Western states and we can put sale tax rate. And then we'll put sales tax rate, okay? Now, how would I turn this into a Pareto chart? You'd put the highest tax rate first and then going down from there. All right. So I could sort this. So I've changed it from now a bar graph to now it's a Pareto chart. Okay. Pareto. Okay. All righty then. Um, Okay, so yeah, this would be a case where a bar chart would be a better choice than a pie chart because the pie chart, it, it's not, these aren't parts of a whole. These are just different tax rates. So this would be a better, an example of a better case to, uh, for a bar chart, okay? Um, now, we could also do a... Uh, a bar chart with more than one data. Um, here's some. Here's an example of two sets of data. Now, this is funny because I'm going to make a graph here, and there's going to be a mistake in it. And so I'm going to make a bar chart here, and I want you guys, as you look at this, there's actually more than one mistake in this. So see if you can tell me what the mistakes are. Like you're saying with specifically the graph? Yeah. I'll make it a little bigger so you can see a little better. There's two mistakes with this graph. It so, puts education like year in the graph? Yes, we graphed the year 
1990 and 2006. So this, this should not be a category, right? Okay. What's the other mistake? The other mistake is that they're not lined up from biggest to smallest. Okay, so, well, if this was a Pareto chart, that would be a mistake. That's true. Uh, it's just a bar chart, so that's not necessarily a mistake. Is it that the numbers on the left-hand side don't match up? They don't match up? Oh, I never noticed that. No, they match up. You've got 60,000 here, and that's about 60,000 here. So that's about right. Is it that the axes aren't labeled? Really? The axes are not practice. labeled. Very good. OK, so we're going to do this again. Very well done. OK, now this is what I usually tell my people in these classes. So if you don't want it to, to um, graph the years, I always put an apostrophe here so it turns this into text. Now it won't graph those two, and so now we can insert. Uh, we'll do a bar chart, 2D bar, and then we'll properly label it. And we can put down here level of education and number of students, and then we can compare. Um, 1990 and 2006. And I'll put a C for compare there. Okay. So the nice thing about this is now that I've turned those into text, it actually creates a little legend for me. So I know the blue is 1990 and the red is 2006. So any questions you guys have for me there? So like on the test when we have to do stuff like this, when I'm I'm assuming it doesn't have to be like excruciatingly detailed. I mean like just as long as we're pretty accurate. Yeah, I mean obviously I'm 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 not gonna mark it off too much if I say that's you know that's that's not forty seven thousand it's forty six thousand I'm not gonna be that picky. Um, but yeah. So and this is another so this is gonna be a hard section to create a multiple choice quiz on. Um, but yeah, so if I so I'll probably on the quiz tomorrow, I'll probably say what are the what's the best type of graph. And so if I gave you something like this, hopefully you'd all tell me a bar graph or a Pareto chart. Either one of those would be correct. Um, this is probably a bar chart as well. Um, this one could be either pi or bar, uh, depending on on um, what you want to do. Um, probably the computer makes it easy to make pie charts. Um, I'll probably make you draw one anyway. But as far as your test goes, um, basically just write, write the graph on a piece of paper and then you'll take a picture of your paper and then you'll upload that. So um, um, just to just to clarify, are we only using pie charts in the future? Like if the percentages add up to 100% or near? Yeah, yes, that's correct. So um, I'm trying to decide if I should start on 2.2, if I should let you guys out earlier. I feel like letting out early is probably a pretty good decision. Yeah, I know. You guys always want to get out early. <laughs> uh, so um, let me look at my notes here really quick and see if I have, because I've covered pretty much all of 2.1. It seems like I usually, usually people fight the technology a lot more. And so I'm done a little bit earlier than normal. Um, As far as for purposes of homework, are you fine if we don't practice doing it on paper and we practice doing it on Excel if we know how to do that? Uh, if you want to practice, that's fine, but the test is all going to be paper and pencil. So, um, yeah. Uh, 
Um, you can see my notes. My notes aren't very detailed. I don't know if these are even very useful. Because um, <laughs> normally I just show you guys how to do this in Excel. Um, here, I'm going to give you a preview of 2.2. We won't go too far. Because I don't, I don't remember who it was. It was a female voice that asked me what was the purpose of doing a frequency distribution. And um, these are going to, so the real purpose, so tomorrow we're going to be doing frequency and relative distribution, relative frequency distributions, and we're going to make a histogram. And so, um, and I'm going to actually give you raw data like this and like this. And we're going to make a frequency distribution. And it's going to be a lot more fun. Um, but I will tell you this just as a kind of a preview of um, tomorrow's lecture. Um, so we're going to go over, so make sure you know frequency and relative frequency because we're going to do that again tomorrow. Um, and so a histogram is like a bar chart on numerical, numerical, or we could also say quantitative data, okay? So for example, these would be, these are the number of lunch arrivals at a Wendy's food store every 15 minutes. So we'll spend, and it'll probably take me more than four minutes to create a, a frequency and relative frequency table. But this time, this is actually raw data I've given you. And so we'll talk about how to do that tomorrow. And uh, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a preview tomorrow. So, so just realize that frequency and relative frequency tables um, this is going to come back again tomorrow. So, um, all righty then. So do you guys like this, uh, what do they call this meet together classroom setting? I'm fine either way. Whatever's you're easier. Either way. I can tell if you're on camera a lot better, that's for sure. And then, uh, how many people we got here? 24, including me. So. All right. Well, I do know. Oh, by the way, one other thing that doesn't get you full points on this um, is if you're not on time. So I usually try to take a, a screenshot, although we took attendance today because I was trying to get to know your faces a little bit better. So I know Broderick. I know Jen. I know Victor. I know Mia now. Um, I'm going to try to get to know your names better. When I'm in class, usually I instead of having online quizzes, we do them in class and I pass them back and that really helps me to know your names. So that's going to be a little bit harder for me. So, all right. Well, I'll let you guys go. Tomorrow's homework is 2.1 and the quiz will be on 2.1 as well. So um, Jed was late due to Teams confusion, I think. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad you were there. So we'll we'll count you being here today. So, all right. So I'm going to stop recording. And if you guys want to stick around and uh, meet together, that will be great. And if you want to go, that's fine too. So, I do have one question. Oh, go ahead. So where where the info we covered was actually in 2.3. As someone pointed out, is the homework still in 2.1, or are we looking at 2.3 for homework questions? Um, uh, that's a good question. I haven't made the quiz yet, so it, I would focus mostly on 2.1. 2.3, you had the cumulative and relative cumulative. I think those are easy concepts. Okay. Uh, but, and I'm going to try very hard to make this multiple choice, um, which I don't know how successful I will be, but maybe I'll have to manually grade some. Any oh, other yeah. questions? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome.